Welcome to the July ultrasound case of the month. For anyone new to the series, each case highlights clinical examples where ultrasound help take better care of patients. My name is Greg Zahn. I'm an assistant professor of clinical emergency medicine. Please email me with any questions or concerns at gzahn at iu.edu. The case starts with the treatment team being notified of a 47-year-old female presenting with the chief complaint of abdominal pain. She described her pain as being most prominent in the epigastric and right upper quadrant region. She denied a relation to food. The pain started approximately one week ago and was intermittent, yet had become constant over the past 24 hours, resulting in her visit. Vitals were obtained and were largely unremarkable. On physical exam, the patient displayed right upper quadrant pain with voluntary guarding, and there was a concern for a Murphy sign. Given her presenting complaints in exam, laboratory studies were obtained. These were rather unremarkable except for a leukocytosis of 14. The patient was evaluated during a rather busy shift, and the treating physician wanted to expedite her workup. Given the physical exam showing right upper quadrant pain and concern for a Murphy sign, the decision was made to perform a right upper quadrant ultrasound. The following images were obtained at bedside. Here is the first clip that was obtained. Take a second to look at this image and attempt to interpret the anatomy and any pathology might be present. Given the initial history, there was a clear concern for a biliary etiology of the patient's pain. In this view, we see a good view of the liver and can actually see the bright line representing the diaphragm. The gallbladder is the black hypocoke structure. Gallstones can be identified within the gallbladder. Similar to the last clip, I'll give you a second to review the image before I comment. In this clip, we see stone and sludge. Additionally, while subtle, this view also appears to show a trace amount of pericholocystic fluid depicted here. This is not definitive and could represent edge artifact given the high reflective surface of the gallbladder wall. I include this clip because we now see a more clear picture of the gallbladder neck. In the previous two images, the stone present in the neck of the gallbladder is difficult to appreciate. This clip clearly shows a stone in the neck representing a more concerning finding. This stone in the neck and concern for obstruction is significant given the fact that it represents a highly specific finding for cholecystitis. The article looked at the finding of a non-mobile stone in the neck in patients presenting with physician concern for gallbladder pathology. The authors reported that a symptomatic patient with an immobile stone in the neck was highly specific for cholecystitis. This should highlight the importance of respecting this finding and the concern that when visualized, it likely represents more than simple cholelithiasis. As I recommend for all structures, the gallbladder was imaged in two planes. This clip represents the short axis plane. The view provides a different orientation for visualization of the gallstones and sludge. The stone in the gallbladder neck is once again visualized. The treating physician felt the workup provided a strong case for cholecystitis. The patient was a female in her 40s, presenting with right upper quadrant pain and a leukocytosis with an ultrasound showing gallstones with a stone in the neck with a positive sonographic Murphy's and questionable pericholecystic fluid. After documenting the exam in QPath and seeing the study to the electronic medical record, general surgery was consulted. The skeptics out there might say this didn't save time given the fact that the patient now requires a formal right upper quadrant ultrasound before surgery will take them to the OR. Yet after reviewing the case and the images uploaded to the EMR, surgery agreed with the diagnosis and accepted the patient without farther imaging. The patient was taken to the OR the next morning no further imaging or radiology ultrasound study was ever performed on the patient. Per operative notes, the gallbladder was clearly inflamed and final pathology confirmed the diagnosis of cholecystitis. The patient did well and was discharged on post-operative day one. Given the wide range of ultrasound experience of viewers, I wanted to cover cholecystitis in slightly more depth. I think this study comparing radiology ultrasonography versus ED ultrasonography test characteristics reviews some high-yield concepts. Like most studies, cholecystitis was defined as cholelithiasis plus any of three additional findings. These three additional findings were pericholecystic fluid, gallbladder wall thickening above 3 mm, or sonographic Murphy's. To achieve the diagnosis of cholecystitis, the operator only needed cholelithiasis and one additional finding, yet multiple findings increased the likelihood of cholecystitis. A sonographic Murphy's had the highest sensitivity yet lowest specificity, wall thickening and pericholecystic fluid were both highly specific yet displayed lower sensitivities. Ultimately, the study showed point-of-care ultrasound compared favorably with radiology ultrasound for cholecystitis. Now that we have clarified what represents cholecystitis, I want to provide abnormal examples to solidify everyone's appreciation of gallbladder pathology. In this clip, we see evidence of gallstones without evidence of pericholecystic fluid or gallbladder wall thickening. 
orientation changes slightly from short axis to long axis as the operator fans through. It also displays how the gallbladder can be followed down to the neck where the portal triad becomes easily visible. In this view, you can clearly see the portal vein and common bile duct. Here's another clip showing evidence of cholelithiasis without evidence of gallbladder wall thickening. Additionally, no pericholecystic fluid is identified. The stone displayed in the middle of the screen can distract from the more distal stone at the neck, which is, as we've stated, is potentially more concerning. I included this clip since most of the stone examples you have seen thus far display large stones. This example shows multiple small stones displayed by the bright multiple areas of echogenic material with poster acoustic shadowing. In this example, it's hard to visualize the gallbladder. In rare cases, the gallbladder can be nearly filled with stones. Thus, when image, you do not get the classic black hypochoic structure, which is easily identifiable. The clip represents what is called wall echogenic shadow. As we can see, the gallbladder is filled with stones and the acoustic shadowing obscures much of the structure of the gallbladder. Here's the clip showing not only stones, but also a very obvious pericholecystic fluid, represented by the dark area just outside the bright gallbladder wall. The final review image is a clip showing impressive gallbladder wall thickening. Stones are not visualized in this clip, yet we do see wall thickening in the hypochoic regions in the wall represent wall edema. I decided to present this case because it represented a bread and butter emergency medicine case. Additionally, ultrasound clearly expedited the patient's care and resulted in a much quicker disposition, which is incredibly useful in a busy emergency department. Multiple studies have documented this effect of decreased length of stay when point of care ultrasound is utilized to evaluate for gallbladder pathology. Please document these findings in the medical record because it helps when discussing these patients with our consultants. As our view, cholecystitis merges a clinical suspicion along with ultrasound that identifies stones along with one of three findings, fluid, thickening, or sonographic murphies. Also, don't forget to evaluate the gallbladder neck given its ability to provide additional evidence for cholecystitis. This is a very easy study to perform, and keep in mind that patient positioning and having the patient hold their breath to drop the diaphragm can greatly increase image quality. Thanks for watching. Continue using ultrasound to help take care of your patients. And as always, email me with any questions or concerns.